one million species of insects in the world, and a lot of them can be found at this guy's place. Steve Kutcher is a 35-year-old entomologist and teacher who believes the only good bug is a live bug. Bugs aren't pests, they're pets. And every day, Steve's out in the yard adding to his collection. A lot of people wonder why, why I collect insects. And there's just such a fascinating world right here in my own little garden. You don't have to have all the equipment you need for hunting big game animals. Here's another better fly. Oh, I miss sometimes. There's a garden spider. They eat many of the insects in my garden. They're good to have around. This is a female. Let's see if I can get her to move a little bit. There she goes. My broccoli plant has harlequin bugs on it. I don't see my harlequin bugs today. I wonder where they're, maybe they went out to lunch. Is another better fly. How to do that backhanded. My next door neighbor has named one of the butterflies Stanley, and Stanley comes every day at 5.30 and sits on the porch. This isn't Stanley, I can tell. His face is different. A lot of people think that insects are all damaging insects, but there are some flies that I recognize as beneficial. Their, their larvae actually eat the larvae of houseflies, so they're destroying houseflies, which is a pest species. When Steve isn't catching flies, he breeds them in his homemade scientific dump. I went to the city dump and, and got bags of garbage and put them in each one of these cans. And I'm rearing flies out of the garbage to see how long it takes for flies to be reared out of garbage. If you think Steve's garden and his makeshift laboratory are full of bugs, you should see the inside of his house. So should his landlord. Um, when I first moved into this palatial palace, uh, my landlord had me sign a little contract saying no pets. And I said, does that include bugs? And she said, no. And so I, I've let this kind of grow. We asked Steve if his affection for flies and bugs has affected his social life. I remember once I went out on a date with a girlfriend and we were necking in the mountains and on a blanket. And uh, I always keep my net nearby and I had it by a tree. And out of the corner of my eye, I saw something fly by and I caught one of the nicest beetles. Uh, it's called a lion beetle. I just dropped her and ran over, caught my net, and caught the beetle, and uh, came back to her with her mouth kind of open and looking at me. But she forgave me because she knew me. Steve feels that a lot of people are really fascinated by bugs. Otherwise, he says, there wouldn't be so much bug-related art. People like to use bug motifs, mostly butterflies, bees, and ladybugs, you'll find. But you'll find a few dragonflies and a few other things. People never put what you would call ugly, ugly um, bugs on, on their shirts. Well, as you can see, my shirt, my tarantula t-shirt. I think that's kind of classy myself. Frequently, Steve is hired as a technical director for horror films. In Exorcist II, he got Locus to jump on James Earl Jones' body and on Linda Blair's face. But in his house, he has trained three of his own beetles, John, Paul, and Ringo, to eat out of his hand. He has a spider, Sally, who likes to crochet a web suspended between his fingers. And he has two other beetles, Merle and Pearl, who like to play dead. And this is my tarantula, Dolores. Dolores has two homes, a winter home and a summer home. And she's right in the middle, so I guess this must be autumn. When some people come in the bathroom, they like to read a book. I like to uh, watch insects and spiders. And here's Dolores. Dolores is, uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, I take her on my elementary school talks, and she has been handled by over 2,000 children, so she can't be that dangerous. Tarantulas make great pets. Uh, they don't bark. Um, they don't make a much of a mess. You don't have to feed them too often. You might wonder if she would bite. And uh, uh, the only way she would bite is if she were squeezed or squashed. Other than that, uh, she just knows she's walking on a slippery surface. I, I taught her her first steps. She, I trained her to be a tap dancer, but uh, she refused. Well, here we are in the kitchen. You can see that you even find bug pot holders, and, and uh, if you look over here, there are some bug dishes. And oh, what is that grasshopper doing on my plate? There's some, a bug mug. I guess it's dinner time. Well, we have some flies from my fly project and some leftover grasshoppers. Uh, here's, here's a grasshopper for you, Dolores. And I will have 
some juice. Okay. I'll put, where should I, I'll put you in the jar. So you can go into the jar. Okay. And I will pour myself a glass of juice. Oh, there's something in the, in the mug. One of the, one of the roaches got in there, I guess. You might wonder, um, this down here. You might wonder what flies, what flies are doing on my kitchen table. In fact, it's not just flies, it's lots of flies. There must be about 10,000 flies around my kitchen. You might say, how could someone possibly sit down and, and, and eat or drink with all these flies around? Well, don't ask me. 